If you're designing an off-grid tiny house, one of the essential elements to consider is what you're going to do with your grey water. Your black water is normally taken care of by a composting toilet system, but what do you do with everything else? Today we've travelled to Peace Farm here in southern Australia to visit Murray, who's going to show us his very cleverly designed system. G'day Murray. G'day Bryce. Good to see you again mate. You too. And this here is your grey water system. Yep, this is the grey water system. So what was your reason for actually wanting to attach this house to a grey water treatment system? Well because we're catching all of our rainwater, we just didn't want to have water uh, wasted basically. So we thought why not uh, filter it and reuse it to grow veggies. So the, the obvious question is, why does grey water actually need to be filtered? Why can't you just use it straight out of the tap? Uh, well, this is feeding into a wicking bed system. So what you've got with a wicking bed system is basically a garden bed with a reservoir of water underneath it. And when you use grey water, it's very nutrient rich and it'll basically start fermenting and a, a lot of biological activity will be happening and, you, and it leads to a lot of smells. and, and and potentially um, biology that, that isn't desirable for growing food. So this system is really just designed to prepare the water so that it can go into the wicking beds? Exactly. It cleans it and it also enlivens it through, the, through it passing through all that biology with the roots and the, and the microorganisms that are contained within the, the medium. Great. Well, can you walk us through the system and show me how it all yeah. works? Yeah. So under here, this is just a cover on the worm farm to stop rain sort of flooding in. Under here I've just got a worm farm. We've got quite a uh, coarse medium and that's basically acting as the first filter and the water's just passing through there. We uh, just pour down uh, rinse water and stuff like that that might have rice or, or salads and it just all gets caught in here and then basically you've got um, the worms start eating it up. Let's see if I can find some worms. There they are. Now that's a fairly new a uh, lot of medium. Every once in a while you have to you'd have to check it probably monthly just to make sure as you go further down it starts to get um, quite quite digested and so if I reach down the bottom there and that's uh, solid worm castings then that's going to start to block up the system. So you just have to reach down and check that it's still in that sort of loose form where the water can travel through easily. And when the worm castings do build up, what do you have to do about that? I would scoop back the back layer, take out those worm castings, put them in the garden, and then, and then chuck it all on that side and scoop out that layer and, and you should be good to go. Then you'll still have your worms in there to populate to keep it ticking over. And it looks here like the coarse medium that you've actually just used is Bark. That's right, I just uh, rummage around uh, the, the wood heap and, and get some of the, the bark off the ground and it works perfectly. So in that sort of first filtration system you've got rid of all of the bits of food and maybe a little bit of the grease, but what's next? Well, underneath there then you've got the grease trap. And the way a grease trap works is we've got a, the drain pipe is running down a tube that, that finishes it at the bottom there or a little bit off the bottom. So that's sending the dirtiest water down to the bottom and then the water has time to settle and as, it's, as you get further and further up it's been more and more clarified. At the top you'll have the oil because that's the lightest uh, out of water and oil and so you don't want the water overflowing from the top because that would be all the oil. So you have the outlet halfway down and then, and then have an elbow and another elbow and then there's your water flowing out. So it's flowing out at the level and creating the level of the bucket there, but it's collecting it from halfway down at the clear level of the water. So you just kind of end up with like a bit of a layer of grease and fat at the top there, do you? That's right, and that's intermittently cleaned out. I think I could probably go for a year and a half, maybe even two years without cleaning it, bearing in mind that I'm throwing the washing up water with the detergent onto the garden using a, a biodegradable eco-friendly detergent and just washing in a basin and just pitching that on the fruit trees or the berries uh, and that just takes a load off the system because in all reed bed systems eventually you have to clean out the gravel but 
the less I have to do that, the better. So I'm just, I'm just trying not to overload the system too much. So when you do have to empty the grease trap, what do you do with that? Oh, that can just go in the garden somewhere. Probably on a fruit tree, they're the safest sort of thing. You don't want to put it on your leafy greens that are taking it straight up and you're eating that. At least with a fruit tree, um, there's a bit of a series of processes be between you pouring the water on and then eating the produce. Right, can that be composted? Yep, they could go on the compost, definitely. Right. Yeah. So after the grease trap, what happens next? So then the, the outlet of the grease trap is just flowing down into the gravel here. And so this is a bathtub filled with gravel. There are partitioned areas, so, so we've got like a, a basin of gravel there and then I've just put a wooden divider in here and here and then covered that in plastic. So, so in effect you've got three, I guess, basins. And so what that means is that when the water goes in, it, it can't just travel straight across and then empty out. It has to go into one and be filtered, go into another and be filtered and so on. So this is scoria, a volcanic rock. And I chose that because it's, it's quite porous. And so there's heaps of space for biology to make its home there, which really is what's doing the work of, of cleaning the water. And what are the actual plants in here and how do they contribute to the system? This is a wet water plant called Eleocaris and you find that growing on the edges of uh, swamps and dams and things like that. And this one's, I think it's called a Baumia and that is a hollow plant and is found in a similar area. So, so you could pretty much go to any wetland, you know, even the sides of roads. Around here there's a lot of um, water that gets held on the sides of roads over the wet period and, you, and you'll find this just growing there and you could probably go and gather some. So how do the plants actually contribute to cleaning the water? Well they're sending their roots down. I've actually, there's so many roots in there that I couldn't actually pull that out. That's like, you know, that's really in there. So there's a whole network of roots that are forming a net uh, that's just filtering, yeah. So that, if you can imagine, that whole bed is just a mass of roots. Excellent. And then all of the microorganisms in there are also contributing to breaking down all of the materials that are sort of forming and getting caught in that porous scoria. Exactly. And they're what's making it available to the plants because initially, you know, some of those uh, raw ingredients that you'll get from the breakdown of food, it, it's not uh, accessible by plants until you've got that biology that can facilitate the nutrients to then be in a form that the plants can take on and you'll know that that's happening because the plants will look really happy. So by the time you get to the holding tank over here, I'll just show you the, uh, the end result. So it's pretty much, pretty much back to crystal clear. So very similar idea to the grease trap except now we're just um, at this point where it's very clear. So the so from the reed bed, it's running here and then down into a tube. So again, you've got this idea that that the fresh or the the most recent water is coming in at the bottom, and then the older water is having all its time to settle and, and all the sediment to settle, and it's rising up to the top, and then that's what comes in to the wicking bed. Right. I've also got some some little mosquito fish in there as well, and that's I guess you could call that a, a type of aquaponics where I'm just using the fish to enliven the water again, add some nutrients, some ammonia, some fertiliser that's then going to find its way into the uh, wicking beds. And with that still water there as well, it obviously also helps to stop mosquito larvae and that sort exactly. of thing from building up there. Yeah. yeah, excellent. So then as you move across here, this is just a little makeshift lid that I've got to keep the mosquitoes out, but basically what you've got here is that's the plug hole that controls the level of, of the water that gathers in the bottom. So you can see it's quite a, quite a level of water, it's probably about 15 centimetres deep and that's just filling up from that, from the, obviously from the sink water and these tubs are joined together underneath through the plug hole, being bathtubs you can just use the plug hole so as that one fills they're all filling simultaneously. And I suppose at this point, depending on how much grey water you're actually creating, you could just chain as many of these tubs together as you need. Exactly, yeah. So if, uh, if I was to find that we're you know, not using all that grey water, you could definitely add as many as it takes 
until you find that balance, because I, I guess you don't want to add so many that the water's insufficient, because then that's just another watering job. But if you find that balance, then it's just a set and forget. You just, you're washing your dishes, plants have been watered, you harvest your herbs for dinner, and that's as simple as it gets. So how do you actually work out the size that the grey water treatment system needs to be in order to cope with the amount of grey water that's coming out of the tiny house? Well like a lot of these things it's really trial and error. I mean you do find certain formulas for various things online but until you actually try it you don't really know. Which is uh, a great reason to just use really cheap materials that you find and then, and then you can make mistakes and it's not like catastrophic. You just go oh well that didn't work and you try something else. So what would you say the cost of setting up this kind of system is? It has a lot to do with how much you've got lying around, how much access you've got to salvaging. We have a transfer station down the road, uh, but fortunately they, they have a, a salvage shop there, so we're able to pick up bathtubs for about $10 each. Plumbing's often one of those things that's pretty hard to get around because it's, it's a precision thing, you know. So sometimes you have to fork out for the plumbing. So, so in this case, I'd say the plumbing probably got up around maybe 70 or 80 dollars. Uh, the bathtubs were 10 dollars each, so there's four of those. I think the, the sink was free, the bucket would have been free. So you're probably looking around 100 dollars. Excellent, super affordable and mm. a really great result that you're getting from this. Yeah, it really is great. And I did want to mention that it doesn't end here as well because that water overflows from there and then goes over to this pond here. So that's just another way of just getting another benefit from the water. And a beautiful aesthetic feature for the garden as well there. That's right, yeah, I mean, um, aesthetics are really important, I think, well, at least for me. Yeah, they, they add quality and, and uh, a sense of well-being to your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Murray, this is a brilliant system. Thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge with me. I really appreciate it. Pleasure, Bryce. Cheers, mate. What I love about this grey water system is that it's just so simple. It's using all natural systems to completely treat the water and turn something that we consider normally in our society to be a waste product and turn it back into a valuable resource for the planet. In this case, growing food. <laughs>